Hi guys, I'm in Altai again and this is our first destination of the day. It's called Church of Palets, which is nothing special except the view that you can see behind me. The view is truly incredible and it's been only a few hours since we arrived to Altai and I'm absolutely loving it so far and I'm so happy to be back. If you haven't watched my previous videos of Altai, I've been here in February. Uh, go ahead and watch them right now. And, and this time I will be exploring the summer Altai. And just like last time, I came to Altai with my friend Ola. I often find myself saying that I want to revisit certain places, but with so many amazing destinations around the world, it can be tough to do so. However, Altai holds a special place in my heart, so I had to come back here again. I came back with the same tour guide, Wow Altai, who I traveled with during winter. I'll link them down below. They are just the best. You can't have better experience exploring Altai anywhere else. I'm not sponsored by them, just sharing my sincere recommendation in case there's a slight chance you want to travel to Russia and visit Altai. So after our first destination, we decided to grab some lunch. While we were on the road, the weather suddenly took a turn for the worse and we got caught in a heavy hailstorm. The hail was so intense that we had to hide under a tree for some time to wait for the hailstorm to stop. It was honestly the biggest hail I've ever seen in my life. But once the storm passed, we finally made it to our lunch spot. We decided to stop at the restaurant to have lunch, just to wait for the rain to stop. And as soon as we come here, the rain stopped immediately. And guys, look at this amazing view. And now we're gonna do the motor rafting. I've never done this before and I'm excited. I'm not dressed very appropriately, but who cares, right? That was really cool actually and I didn't even drop my phone into the water, which is great. And right now we came to a place that we visited in winter, we're gonna see the Kamushlinsky waterfall. Uh, but last time we saw it frozen, this time it's gonna be a, a real regular waterfall. There's so many rabbits everywhere and they're not even that scared. They are probably used to humans' attention. Wow. <laughs> I was curious to see how Kamushlinsky waterfall would look like in the summer. I already liked it in winter, but in the summertime it impressed me even more. It's one of the most impressive waterfalls in the Altai Republic of Russia and is located right on the bank of the Katun River. And as you can see, not only is the waterfall itself stunning, but the surrounding area is also incredibly beautiful. We just came to a contact farm. It's not a zoo, it's a farm uh, where you can touch and feed every animal. They give you a little bucket in the entrance. And it's so amazing here. The emotions that I'm receiving here are just indescribable. Lachmata <laughs> Firma <laughs> also known as the shaggy farm, gives visitors the chance to see the diverse range of animals that can be found in the Altai Republic of Russia. During our visit, we were able to feed and touch so many animals there, which brought us so much joy. Just look how happy we are feeding the deers, guys. For some reason, feeding the animals always makes people so happy. <coughs> those guys that were running after the cows in one of my previous Altai videos from the winter on oh no. <laughs> 
Wow, these are so beautiful. Black foxes. Oi. Oops. It started to rain so fast. We have to run now. <laughs> Another amazing spot. That's where we're gonna have dinner tonight. And this place is pretty awesome. It's located right on the bank of Katun River, which you can see right there. And there's an open heating pool. This place is just unreal. I really wish we stayed here, but we're staying in another place, a little bit deeper in the forest. It's nice as well, but this is like top. Everybody. We're starting our second day on Altai and our first location of today is the Chief of the Dragon, the place we are in right now. We visited it in winter but uh, I like everything in summer much better. And other than this place we have uh, a lot of activities for today, one of which is a four-hour rafting down the Katun River which I am excited about and terrified at the same time, but that should be fun. And I will tell you more information about Altai today. But before we went rafting, we visited Patmos Island first. Patmos is a tiny island located on the Katun River near the village of Chemal. The island is named after the Greek island of Patmos, which is known for its religious significance. This island is also considered a sacred place and is home to several monasteries and churches. We visited one of the churches, called the Church of St. John the Theologian, which is built in the traditional Russian Orthodox style. What makes Patmos Island so unique is that it can only be accessed by boat or by crossing a footbridge that spans the Katun River. There are no permanent residents or facilities on the island, which adds to its sense of remote wilderness and makes it a truly special destination to explore. From Patmos Island begins the so-called Goat Trail, or Kozia Trapa. It's a narrow and steep path that runs along the edge of a cliff along the Katun River. The trail is named after the goats that used to climb up and down the cliff to access gazing areas. And today the Goat Trail is a popular destination for tourists and hikers who want to enjoy a challenging trek with beautiful views of the Altai Mountains. While we were walking along the goat trail on our way to lunch, we came across a fun activity called Tarzanka, or bungee, small bungee. We had some time to spare before the lunch, so Oli and I really wanted to try it, because it looked like so much fun from the side. We saw people flying over the Russian Katun River, including small children, so we decided to give it a try ourselves. Olya went first and it was clear that she was having a blast. She looked like a flying ballerina, enjoying herself so much. How can you not want to try it out when you see somebody who's absolutely loving their life right now? And here I am. 
right there I was already dying on the inside from the fear and asking if I would die there. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those people. But they assured me that everything would be fine, so I jumped. Unfortunately, you can't hear me screaming in terror from this point, and the camera was too far away to capture the fear on my face when I jumped. And a few seconds later, I started crying, <laughs> and I cried the entire time on this bungee, even though you can't see it. So as you can imagine, I did not enjoy the experience at all. I'm not really into extreme stuff and that thing wasn't even that scary and from the side it looked super fun and I thought that I would enjoy it so much but I didn't not even for a second that was one of the most stressful experiences of my life but I'm fine now so we already had lunch I'm feeling a lot better now and uh, right now we're going for rafting i'm not gonna take my phone with me because i don't want to risk to drop it off so i will just uh, share my thoughts with you afterwards uh, by the way this is the territory of our hotel uh, we're living in houses like this and we are actually staying by the river which i only discovered it today we have arrived to the spot i already got my equipment and it's time to change now I finally feel like it's summer here because I'm putting the sunscreen because we are going to be under the sun at least for some time and it's very important to protect your skin. So, we're all ready now, all fully equipped. I'm excited, uh, a little nervous, but excited. It's gonna be a long ride, we're gonna be in the water for almost four hours. And uh, as I already said, I'm not gonna bring my phone with me, but maybe our instructor will film us, film us a little bit. And uh, I will see you in four hours, and I will tell you my impressions. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say that the river is really cold. It's about uh, 15 degrees Celsius. So if anybody will have to fall, it will not be a pleasant experience. So we just arrived and changed already and I must say it was really nice. It was actually not as scary as I thought it would be because we were told some stories before so I was a little nervous but in fact it was very nice and calm and chill for the entire ride. We weren't paddling much though, uh, we were swimming on the floor most of the time but we were paddling sometimes and there were only a few crazy moments but they were really fun. We were also very lucky with the weather, it was sunny the whole time, not too cold, uh, not hot and um, overall just great experience and I'm really grateful for it. And now we're back from rafting to our hotel and we're about to do the Russian banya and the barbecue afterwards.
Good morning, my friends. It's another day on Altai, day number three. Yesterday I was so tired, I couldn't even film the rest of the day, but you can already predict that it was amazing. And today we're gonna drive along the Chuski Highway. You can see my other video about Altai to learn more about it. I will link it down below. Yeah, we're gonna be driving along the Chuski Highway for a very long time, for about six hours while stopping on some destinations along our way. And of course, I'm gonna take you on this journey with me. This is our breakfast spot for today. Pretty cool, right? After breakfast, we begin our drive along the most scenic road in Russia, Chuisky Highway, directly to our lunch destination. You may be wondering why we went straight from breakfast to lunch. Well, it's because the road took a little more than three hours to get to the village where we were supposed to have our lunch. But along the way, we did stop at a few locations, such as this flower field, or to watch cows gazing, as we, the city people, aren't used to seeing them. And after three hours, we finally reached our destination. Right now we stopped in a little village. One of the local ladies invited us to have lunch with her. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And I'm excited. For lunch, we were served a variety of local dishes, all of which were homemade, including the butter and sour cream. After lunch, we were treated to a traditional Altai throat singing performance, which I've talked more about in my other video. I'll link it below if you want to learn more. This time, I even had the opportunity to participate in the band. Take a close look at the instruments that this girl and I are playing. Can you guess what they are? We just had lunch, then we had a throat singing performance again. I even participated in a band. Right now I'm on a beautiful field surrounded by the dogs and the cows and the beautiful mountains, beautiful sky, amazing fresh air. I'm just really happy right now and I don't know what can be better than this. After leaving this village, we continued driving on the Chuski Highway towards the Aktash village. The Chuski Highway is considered the most beautiful road in Russia and is one of the top 10 most beautiful roads in the world, according to National Geographic magazine. We drove on this road before during winter and it looked completely different in the summer. And although I usually prefer everything in the summer, I found this road more beautiful in winter. So, while we were driving towards the Aktash village, we stopped at the several viewing points. One of them was a spot we had already visited during winter. I couldn't find the exact name of the spot, but it's a very popular place for people to stop and take pictures, because it's just a really beautiful one. Late in the evening, we finally arrived at our destination. We quickly had dinner and for the rest of the night, we were listening to Bulat singing songs to us. He's the co-founder of the Wow Altai company, by the way. We also enjoyed some beer while listening to his performance before heading to bed shortly after. Good 
Good morning, everybody. So right now we're getting ready to go camping. We're gonna go uh, camping up in the mountains to see some lakes. And we're gonna be out of the service, out of civilization and electricity for two days straight. But I will leave it for the next video. Make sure to watch the second part of my Altai trip, which will be completely different from this video, where I will show you everything about our epic camping trip. So in case you didn't enjoy this video, you will definitely love the next one. And now let's continue with the final day of my Altai trip. Hello friends, it's now three days later and uh, I was just in a very interesting place and where you will see it in my different video. And now we came to a 31,000 meter high mountain and you can see such breathtaking views here. It's a little bit chilly here and it's also hard to breathe and talk here. And uh, this is our last day on Altai and we have a few more very interesting and cool places to visit today. So again, stay tuned if you want to see it all. <laughs> We just came to another beautiful location, it's called Chuiski Meandre and it's just really beautiful. Then we visited the Geyser Lake, a place we had already been to during winter. It was amazing how different it looked compared to the winter season. In summer the lake looked way more bright and vibrant. And despite its name, the Geyser Lake doesn't actually have any geysers. Instead, underground springs push up blue clay and sand, creating beautiful patterns on the bottom of the lake. And even though I think this lake looks way better during summer, there were just so many people there. And in winter we had the entire place to ourselves. Unexpected guests at our tour base. <laughs> we are leaving our base where we stayed for one day and we're going to be driving back along the Chuiski Highway and we're going to stop uh, at a few of the places along our way and uh, it's going to be a very long ride and it's already uh, 6 p.m. I'm very tired and exhausted, full of emotions and impressions. We stopped at the confluence of the Chui and Katun rivers and I can definitely say that it looks way better in summer than in winter. If you want to see how it looked like in winter, you can check out my video, I will link it down below. So this concludes the first part of my trip, guys. I would really like to hear your thoughts on the Altai Republic of Russia. And tell me which places you liked the most among the ones I showed you. Also, if you watched my winter video, please let me know which season you prefer, summer or winter. And I will see you in the second part. Take care.